Should I buy the best CPU from the previous generation or should I get a more mid-range option from the newest generation? This is the question that tons of CPU shoppers are asking themselves and I gotta admit, I was just asking it myself. So let's talk about the differences between the i7-13700K versus the i9-12900K. Uh, and I'll actually tell you at the end of this video what I used for my upcoming build. The Alder Lake architecture is used in its most effective form in the core i9-12900K, which is at the top of Intel's desktop 12th generation processors. It marks a significant improvement over its 11th generation Rocket Lake predecessors. As evidence of how eager Intel was to compete with AMD, who had basically had Intel soundly defeated with the Ryzen 5000 series, the 12th generation of Intels actually launched the same year as their 11th generation Intels did. The new processors, along with the i9-12900K, launched the hybrid core architecture for the desktop market, which we'll still see in the 13th generation with the LGA-1700 socket, which is a bigger CPU socket, DDR5 memory, and PCI Express Gen 5. This generation is also the first desktop processors from Intel to be built on the Intel 7 process, which is the 10 nanometer enhanced Superfin node, a sharp and unmistakable upgrade from the six years of being on the 14 nanometer. One of the three processor types that Intel unveiled in October is the Core i7-13700K. This 13th generation Core Raptor Lake processor is significant because Intel will no longer release processors using monolithic silicon after this generation. Instead, it will switch to chiplets with its IDM 2.0 manufacturing methods starting with Meteor Lake and afterwards. Intel raised CPU core counts with the 13th generation series, but only by adding extra E cores as we see in the Core i9-13900K, which features 8 P cores and 16 E cores. The P core numbers are unchanged from generation to generation despite an improvement in performance for the P cores themselves. Although the new i7-13700K we look at in this video has a similar core configuration to the previous generation's flagship, this does not mean that Intel is doing the same thing it did with the Core i9-9900K and Core i7-10700K, which were essentially the same chip as they both had equal performance. We say this because in terms of appearance, the i7-13700K and the i9-12900K are distinct and there are performance differences. Now let's talk a little bit about specs for each chip. The i7-13700K is a desktop processor and part of the i7 lineup with 16 cores. This CPU uses the Raptor Lake architecture with an LGA-1700 socket, and thanks to Intel hyper-threading, the core count is effectively doubled to 24 threads. It has 30 megabytes of L3 cache and operates at 3.4 gigahertz by default, but can boost up to 5.4 gigahertz depending on the workload. The i9-12900K, on the other hand, is a 16-core processor in an 8 plus 8 design, which means it features 8 P-cores and 8 E-cores to meet its total core count. The enabled hyper-threading on the P-cores doubles the available threads to 16, making a total of 24 threads when the E-cores are considered. This CPU also has 30 megabytes of L3 cache and operates at 3.2 gigahertz by default, but can also boost up to 5.2 gigahertz. With 8 golden cores and 8 efficient, gracement cores that the i9-12900K features, the 13700K offers an identical core count to the flagship of the 12000 series. However, each of the 8P cores on the 13700 is a new gen Raptor core featuring larger 2 megabyte dedicated L2 caches compared to 1.25 megabytes on the Golden Cove P cores. Each of the two Gracemont E core clusters also gets 4 megabytes of L2 cache shared amongst the four E cores in the cluster, which is an increase from 2 megabytes per cluster on Alder Lake on which the 12900K is built. And when it comes down to clock speeds, the 13700K does it better with higher clock speeds than the 12900K. The 13700K likewise belongs to socket LGA1700, which the 12900K does also. This means if you happen to be upgrading from a 12th generation already, you do not need to upgrade your motherboard as it also uses the LGA1700 socket. Talking about the architectural differences of both CPUs, the 13700K features the latest Raptor Lake architecture and the 12900K boasts the Alder, Alder Lake architecture. While Alder Lake processors may be some of the best gaming CPUs around, the Raptor Lake chips are evidently faster. The Raptor Lake chips are designed on the Intel 7 process and has a 15% gain in single threaded performance and a 41% gain in multi-threaded compared to Alder Lake. This gives it an amazing overall 40% performance scaling. Raptor Lake also comes with enhanced 
overclocking features, support for an AI M.2 module with chips compatible with the Alder Lake systems. Although Raptor Lake processors are designed on the same process as those on Alder Lake, the former supports faster DDR5-5600 and DDR5-2200 memory, but maintains DDR4 compatibility. Raptor Lake also exposes the most robust overclocking features in the highest frequency ceilings we've ever seen with a modern chip. There are also two options with both architectural builds. There's a variety that comes with integrated graphics and another one without. You can easily tell them apart with the K and the KF suffix. K variants come with integrated graphics, while the cheaper KF variants do not. When it comes to performance, the 13700K is tested to be about 11% more powerful than the i7-12700K and 5% faster than the 12900K. And since the 12900K already tends to beat the Ryzen 5000 chips in terms of gaming performance, this puts the 13700K another step ahead of both CPUs. Although there's a 5% advantage for this 13th gen CPU against the 12900K, this is very negligible and can be very hard to notice. You only get a few extra frames per second with the 13 13700K when tested against demanding games such as Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Days Gone, and the likes. Coming down to how these CPUs performed when tested with various benchmark software, the 13700K gave a 6% score above the 12900K in single core test and 8% in multi core with Geekbench 4. It also gave the 12900K a 1% gap in single core with Cinebench R23 and 5% in multi core. These scores clearly reiterates the fact that the 13700K is built on the new Raptor Lake architecture and it still gives an almost similar performance level as the 12900K. Since many games don't fully utilize multiple cores, some games can do well with just single core performance. Having more than six to eight cores does not make much difference for recent demanding games. You can also run multiple apps simultaneously without experiencing performance lag if a CPU has many cores. The 13700K offers considerably more performance, of course, so the energy efficiency or performance per watt is also worth considering. With a TDP of 125 watts and a peak of up to 250 watts, it consumes a lot of power, and the 12900K is no different. The 12900K uses 133 watts on average and 257 watts maximum, giving the 13700K a noticeable energy efficiency. Also, when it comes to cooling, the 13700K and the 12900K, which features similar core counts, it's not as challenging with the 13900K, which peaks at around 283 watts, largely because they have eight fewer e-cores. But then again, Intel's chips have always been designed to sustain these seemingly high temperatures over the span of their warranty. Now let's talk about the price of these two CPUs. The i7-13700K currently sells online for about $440, which is a little bit higher than the Intel MSRP of $409. This price point places at a preferable level to the 12900K, which is still selling for $479 as it's faster and more modern. You also get more performance for a lesser price with the 13700K. Considering the other options from the 13th gen, like the i5-13600K, which gives the best price to performance ratio at $300, and the i9-13900K, which is currently the fastest processor from Intel you can buy, but retails at about $620, this puts the 13700K in a competition against its siblings because for just $139 more than the i5, you can get 6P cores and 8E cores. And whereas the Core 9 13900K, which is $180 more, gives you two additional E core clusters, and that is eight more E cores in total, and of course, slightly higher clock speeds. Intel's Core i7 13700K shows the efficiency of the 13th generation architecture as it offers incredible though little performance metrics in multi-core and single-threaded benchmarks against the Core i9-12900K. Unlike the 12900K, the Intel Core i7-13700K is also an equal match with the Ryzen 7 7700X, which offers incredible single-threaded performance. This is especially important because single-threaded performance is typically the main CPU performance driver in video games. When it comes to heavy workloads, the 13700K and the 12900K are also fantastic. They're ideal for higher resolutions like 1440p and 4K while gaming. The 13700K appears like a good choice if you're seeking middle to high-end processor that comes at a lower price point than the competition within its own family. So at the end of the day, guys, I actually ended up choosing the 13700K for my newest build, and we'll be doing a video on that here in a bit. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like and subscribe and let us know what you think. Thanks.